She got up and killed half the bottle on the balcony to the sounds of priest Stevie Nicks Fleetwood Mac at the Marquee Club when the harmonica ruled the mic. She had it between her legs. You have to hit it so hard, he asked. Good red, she replied. Her mouth was stained with it. Looks like you got your teeth kicked in. That's the downside of my job. Battling the monsters in Townsville is no picnic, Mr. Man. I'm the fourth Powerpuff Girl. He hid the bottle from her when she went to the bathroom, and she kept searching it down, and he would hide it again. She would search. She licked her lips. You didn't get it all, he said. He licked her lips for her. In time, they lay in the bedroom on the queen, and Will stroked her hair, maternal to this child of a godless, bitter woman, this child who had wrinkled her little face to the insults her own blood burdened her with. Stupid, you're so stupid for dropping an earring down the sink by accident, or for not dropping anything down any sink. And the only way the girl could separate her insults from the real her, the one she loved and who loved her, was the familiar yet strange and heavy badness on her mom's breath, a badness even her mother called bad, and the scared, wet, but tearless eyes. He put his palm on Bella's forehead and then threw her hair and thought about not falling asleep. Then... He fell asleep. Chapter 8 A recurring paranoia returned. A fear that were he to fall asleep, he would die. The fear was grounded in past occasions. He woke to the roar of a different world, holding his head and stumbling. Some spirit he had wronged. This fear had the gravity of vengeance by the hands of those wrongly done over. Hot blood that never aged, but waited to strike him. He knew not his transgression, whether it sourced from a life previous and followed him here, or a consequence of the error of his ways. There are some disturbances that will remain in obscurity, and without prediction will inflict themselves upon you. To stay conscious, he had to leave Bella on her bed in her room. He must have passed out a little while. He wasn't sure. He ventured into the early morning darkness that covered the apartment, made darker by each bulb he illuminated. He found the empty bottle of Shivaz in a corner under a chair. Then in the bathroom, the second bottle he had fetched a minute or two before the liquor store closed for the night. When he had pushed his feet into his shoes, and his leatherman in his pocket with his keys and wallet and bandana and protection, and strode down the block with blind faith that the dark corner was not so abandoned as it looked. He was alone. He tried to write, but was easily fatigued, for all his thoughts concentrated on consciousness. Sleep was related to death. He drank a gallon of water in an hour, then another, and wiped his mouth dry. He heard it, the silence of those whose feet he saw, or he thought he saw, by virtue of blocked light under the door. And he knew he had to stay up and grab onto the icon and iron around his neck and spin it on the chain into infinity's figure eight and concentrate on the love he felt for her asleep and unknowing on her pillow on the last train to Clarksville with her eyelashes unthreatened by the uncommon stops in between the sparsely settled American farmland that separated every here from every there and gave him solace in its unsettledness and its everywhere. <laughs>